Here we go then guys, your nan's favourite milkman is back with another stadium tour. So let's crack on, get the last of this milk delivered and head over to Fratton Park and deliver some fresh shenanigans. Let's go. Just a reminder, ladies and gents, that's why I look so bloody rough. I barely sleep, but it does not matter because I'm living on excitement. The excitement that is touring traditional English football stadiums. And today we're going to do just that. We're at Fratton Park, of course, home of Portsmouth Football Club. And we've got a stadium tour booked at 9.30. It's like 10 past eight. So we've got enough time to do our usual 360 around the ground. And hopefully, otherwise we'll do it after the tour. There's a Pompey shop over there. So they're not currently a Premier League club, as you know. They're smashing it in League One. When we visit all the Premier League grounds, we do have a rule that we have to buy something from the club shop, but we might still buy something. I'm looking forward to checking that out. Now, Portsmouth have always been here. They're one of the rare clubs that have been here since their inception. Now, this iconic ground was built and opened in 1899. The first game that took place here was indeed against Portsmouth's arch rivals, Southampton. It was a friendly match, but it was one in which Portsmouth won 2-0. So they were off to a good start here at Fratton Park. You've read the title and Portsmouth's Fratton Park has the claim of being the only English professional football ground to not be sat on mainland Great Britain, according to Wikipedia. But if you look behind me now, you've got all the history on the walls. We love it when clubs put all their history on the outside of the ground. So although the first game took place here in 1899, if you look behind me, Portsmouth was founded a year prior in 1898. Now. The founders of Portsmouth saw the success of football more towards the north of England. We've recently done videos on Sheffield FC uh, and teams up that way. You know, we've covered Bramall Lane, the ground, Field Mill and so on. They wanted a piece of that pie. There's loads of Portsmouth's achievements on the side of, I think this is the South Stand. Nope. You've got FA Cup winners, 1939, champions of England in 49 and 50. Who would have thought that? Who hadn't done their research like me on Wikipedia? More recently, 2008 FA Cup winners as well. So let's crack on with this 360. We'll throw a few facts and Portsmouth fans get involved in the comments below. Those of you who've been here on away days as well, let us know what your experiences were here at Fratton Park. It's known, should I say, the old girl, as the Portsmouth fans like to call it, the old girl. That's something I can relate to. We call, I call my, my mum the old girl, the old man, the old folks. Yeah, the old girl. What are your experiences of the old girl? I'd really want to come here on match day because it's supposed to be bloody good. So those founders we've just mentioned, they were crafty buggers. They called it Fratton Park almost deceptively because it gave the impression that Fratton Park was in Fratton, an area uh, in Portsmouth but this isn't actually in, in Fratton, it's in a place called Milton, but they wanted to give the illusion that it was next to the Fratton, can't go out this way, I'm stuck. <laughs> they wanted to give the impression that it was next to the Fratton railway station so that kind of potential supporters would see it as an easy access stadium to get to, to watch football. But in reality, it's like a mile walk, but hey ho. So in typical fashion, I've got lost already, but there's the shop. We'll come back here in a moment. Let's head down this way. I'm especially excited to see the famous kind of Tudory looking side. Uh, I think that's down Frogmore Road because I went down there initially. I sat and have my way there. Reason being, as you know, I'm obsessed with Scottish architect Archibald Leach. Now we've mentioned him numerous times on the channel. It's almost like a secret thing I do where I try and mention him as much as possible and hope you don't notice. But because I've not mentioned him for about 10 minutes, he's essentially the guy who's designed, created some of the most iconic stands in English football history. We've mentioned the Stevenage Road, now the Johnny Haynes stand at Fulham. We went to Highbury and we spoke about him there. We speak about him every week, but he is responsible for the updated version of the stand we're about to go to. So whilst I've got my notes out, guys, did you know that the record attendance here at Fratton Park was a whopping 51,385 in 1949? That was the year they won their first first division title, as we saw. Oh my God. Well, we've got a little bit of a tease over there. It's not quite that Tudor side quite yet, but it's looking good. So one thing we love at Rise Football Paradise is 
the differences you can get at football stadiums from each stand, you know, the quirkiness. We don't necessarily like, as much as we like modern stadiums, like we went to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, we like the uniqueness. If you just look down here, this is basically like Graffiti Street. Really, really unorthodox. But if you look underneath this Tudory looking stand, again, I'll get the name of it in a moment. It does remind me a bit of one of the stands we saw at Craven Cottage. It's got that slight gap underneath. Very unique, very unique indeed. I've got a feeling this might lead somewhere near Frogmore Road over here, but just look at this. You don't get this very often around English football grounds. I like it. This isn't the entrance way I'm talking about, but just look at that. That is a thing of beauty. I mean, it does say 1898, which is obviously the founding date for Portsmouth. I know this didn't open till 1899, but I did read a story about they were trying to get the ground ready for, was it the FA or someone like that, some authority figure, and they were still growing potatoes on the pitch because uh, I believe it might have been a bit of farmland. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but they basically used a lot of money in getting this ground ready. I wanted to kind of rinse every bit of penny they could from like selling the potatoes on the land. Again, never trust Wikipedia as your resource of information. Take everything I say today with a pinch of salt, guys. If you are new around here, part of the fun of this series we do, looking around football stadiums, is the fact that I know very little about it. So it only works when you guys participate in the comments below because the fun about experiencing these grounds is we, we learn something. Now this, this is the road, because I was parked down there. At the far end of here, we're gonna get that sexy entrance. Let's go. So I must've got my bearings all wrong at the start, because this is the South Stand. Now this current look of the South Stand is down to, again, Scottish architect when he rebuilt the stand in 1925. Archibald Leach had to basically integrate the new stand into that Tudory style house, pavilion, whatever you want to call it. But the original architect for the original stand for most of the stadium was Arthur Cogswell. Now that basically, the roof blew off, I think. Um, so basically they had to redesign it. But if you just look, it looks absolutely stunning. This is probably one of the most beautiful looking entranceways in all the football grounds we've seen so far. So just to the side of this gorgeous stand, you've got the reception area over there. Now that's the entranceway over there to the south stand upper. Really does look fantastic. Let's continue this little wander around. Is that an alleyway? Can we go down there? It is indeed. Down we go. Loads of little quirky alleyways and we were over overusing the word quirky, but I think it will come up a lot today, guys, because it is very much the definition of quirky. Nicely signposted everywhere you go as well, guys. Main reception, hospitality lounges, club shop and that this way. Now, I must admit, I'd add an energy drink on the way here because, again, I've come straight off that night shift, but it hasn't set well on my stomach. So I did have to park in this Tesco and I had a bit of a repeat of what happened at Man United Spurs. I had to quickly go for a, a Scooby-Doo, a poo. And uh, so yeah, you've got a nice Tesco right next door to Fratton Park. We often say it's weird when you get the old school grounds like this, but then it's right next to basically like a shopping retail park. Not only have you got the Tesco, you've got B&Q, Matalan, all your various shops. I mean, it's similar to when we went to Field Mill the other day, which is the oldest professional football stadium in the world. Uh, and that had everything on the doorstep as well. So it's really nice to get the old and new contrast. Together we achieve, we are Portsmouth. The thought of another Red Bull right now does make me want to be sick. So we're going to head through this Tesco car park now, guys. And we're going to go back to where we started, back to the club shop. Hopefully the club shop's opened and we're not far off starting the stadium tour. But not only does this stadium have the distinction of being the only professional English football stadium not on mainland Britain, it was also the very first football ground 
to have a match in an evening under artificial lighting, aka floodlights. The floodlights changed a while after. They originally, I think, on the north and south stand, and then obviously they went into all four corners. They've been updated since then. So, not, yeah, so loads of historical firsts here at Fratton Park. That first game under floodlights was against Newcastle. We've, we've done a Newcastle Stadium tour, guys, so if you are new to the channel, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any stadium tours. We're doing all 20 Premier League stadiums and currently we've done 18. Just two more, Brighton and Luton, the Amex and Kenilworth Road. But as we're here, you can see over there the Victory Lounge. I believe the tour might start from there because we're parked over there. So yes, hit that like button, subscribe. Not only is this going to be a good video, when we go to the arch rivals, we're actually going to be joined by a Southampton fan. So that is going to be a good video too. So don't miss out on that one. So then guys, we've just mentioned the, obviously the fact of the first football league evening game to be played under floodlights. That is one of the old floodlights over there in the distance. Again, we said they've modern, most grounds now have kind of new modern lights on the actual stand itself, but they did keep one of those floodlights over there to kind of mark the history of that occasion. I think it's currently being used as like a telephone pole line, something like that. But it's a nice little touch by Portsmouth, again, retaining some of that history of the ground. And the current capacity is like just over 20,000, I believe. We'll find out for sure on the tour. But play at Pompey, it's on the entrance of the door. Hopefully the shop's open. Let's go and have a look. So the, uh, the shop is closed at the moment, but that's not a bad thing because it's always nice to finish up these videos in the club shop. So we will go there as we part just there as well. We'll go there straight after the tour. I can see in front of me a statue. So it's on the way to where we need to go. Let's go and check out who is the statue of. So Jimmy Dickinson. And for those of you that are unsure as to who he is or some of his trivia, some of his facts. We've got all of it on the wall here. So he was born in 1925 in Hampshire, so a local lad. And uh, he played for England 48 times, including at two, two World Cups, 1950 and 1954. Hell of achievement. And I'm guessing, as it says here, they signed, yeah, Portsmouth signed him as a trainee in 1943. And he's basically become a legend at Portsmouth. This is more like it, career statistics. At Portsmouth, he had 764 league appearances for Portsmouth. Wow, from 1946 to 1965. So almost 20 years here at Portsmouth. So he definitely deserves a bloody statue. 828 games in total from all, from all competitions. He was there as a player for those two first division titles as well in the 48-49 season and the 49-50 season when Portsmouth were dominating English football. So very, very much rightly so should Mr. Jimmy Dickinson have a statue. We made reference, guys, at the start of the video to the fact that Portsmouth seem to be on the on the way back up, but obviously they've gone through a tough time over the past 10 years. And as you can see here, Portsmouth Football Club, saved by the fans, 2013. You've got some of the names of the fans that stuck by them and helped them out during those tough times. I was just about to say, guys, there's not that much of a tease on this corner. You know I love a corner of a football ground, but then just look through here. Bloody hell, that is a tease. Let's not get too excited, Roy.
Jack's never have got into that Hall of Fame. Yeah, and I've got to be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Love the artwork. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Beautiful artwork, yeah. That's the original um, formation minute from 1898. What, the original? Well, the copy's in the safe. Uh, sorry, the original's in the safe. But ah, it's uh, a copy, the yeah. Copy You've got someone sat in a special chair. They won't be sitting. Round tables, one, two, and three. We're one of only two teams that have won all five professional divisions, because there used to be a fifth professional division, and we've won that as well. <laughs> Which is the one about the roof until 2008? That one, yeah. Oh, gross. <laughs> yeah. Was that because of like fans. Premier League? Fans standing, isn't it the only Premier League ground, like Premier, like since rebranding as a Premier League, isn't it the only one without a roof? Is that what I read? It was, yeah. Did it go that way? Yeah. yeah. They have to charge it up just like any just like any mobile phone. Look. It's cool. Oh, bloody hell. Look at that. I love that. So I love charge that. It up. The fact they have to charge <laughs> it up. Just tickle. Careful when you go down. You know the port where it's minutes and something. If you want. Drug room. Excuse me. Six. Our chaplain's laundry. And back here at ten o'clock Monday morning. All done. Oh wow. And we used to have a big bath in there, that's all now showers. But the bath used to hold 14 people, and uh, we had a big pipe come out the wall there. Hot water that way, cold water that way. If we won, they got hot water. If we lost, they got cold water. Okay. Kids, if you... Where's Ed Sheeran? Have you had your picture done, Ed Sheeran? No, not yet. Because they like the camaraderie and they like being together. Um, they're cool. And this was all done up in the summer, so it's looking a little nicer than it did, say, a year ago. But... Have you enjoyed it, kids? Yeah. Right, so I'd like you to sort of imagine it's getting close to maybe sort of tens of three, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think's going on here? What, what do you think it's like here? Some players are really quiet. There's some players that are really quiet. Yeah. Some players are really quiet. 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 So uh, they assemble in, in, in their two teams. <laughs> they just don't make goalkeeper shirts like they did in the, in the 90s. Just like this. Yeah. Yeah. The new sponsor, A6 making the kit. Beautiful. Just for you guys to see. Normally, when you come in here on a Saturday morning, everybody's kit is already out. Yeah, okay. And uh, unfortunately, uh, all the players' shirts used to be with the name facing us. Yeah. And then uh, a while ago, someone took a panoramic of the whole lot and put it on social media. And of course, the manager went nuts because uh, someone could tell who was in the squad yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. day. And uh, so now, when you do the retro the ones, to turn the other way. I love that the, the, the news the one is, is my favourite one. Is it? The news, yeah. Okay. 
not far from me then, I'm currently living in Cheltenham. Obviously after you mentioned, oh look at that, I didn't even know there was some artwork up there as well. Yeah, yeah. well Alan Ball said, people went to war from this city. It feels wet now, doesn't it? Right, so let me, let me tell you a little bit about the stadium if I may. So you're sat in the home dugout. You're sat in the away dugout. They used to be called dugouts because they were literally areas that were dug out at the site. So beautiful day. So over in the Milton end, this is where Portsmouth had the first and only ever Premier League stadium without a roof. That's not because that roof blew off, but obviously they've covered it over now. In the 2007-2008 no, season, they covered it over. Currently on the south stand, again that beautiful stand. Apparently Archibald Leach actually redesigned the north stand as well. And Terry Venables, who was chairman at the time, was responsible for the Fratton end. Really, really good quality pitch as well. Jimmy Dickinson, who we saw uh, the statue outside, is obviously his face is actually in the seats as well, so that's a nice touch. So that's the stadium tour, guys. We're going to head over now to the club shop. Uh, but it has indeed been unique, unorthodox, different than any other ground we've been to so far. Right then guys, so when we visit Premier League stadiums, as I said, we have to buy something from the club shop. But today I've decided to buy two things from the club shop, two cheap and cheerful items. One of which isn't for me, one of which is for my loyal Hammer subscriber, Steve. Steve, I think you asked for a pin badge, didn't you mate? Maybe I'm dreaming of it. I think that's what you asked for. Steve, this is for you. Let me know your address if you're on Instagram, at Rise Footy Paradise. That's for you, Steve. And for me, from the bargain aisle, I'm not even that into darts, but we love, again, let's use that word once again, quirky items. We've got some flights for some darts. I don't even know where my darts are. I've not even got, not even got a dart board, but it can go in a man cave. As I said before, we're refurbishing the footy paradise. We're gonna have a nice sort of YouTube studio setup. And as I said on, uh, on YouTube earlier on in the week, we're thinking of doing a weekly live stream there is a poll and you guys have suggested Wednesday evenings for the live stream. Let us know in the comments below if that suits you. A Wednesday evening, a bit of a live stream. I would like to do it outside uh, a ground like this, but it does depend on the internet connection. Otherwise, again, we'll do it at Footy Paradise HQ. But I've loved Fratton Park. I need to be careful. Don't want to say it too loudly, but we are off now to the home of Southampton. We're off to St. Mary's. We went to the Dow the other week. So I'm interested to see whether the Dow to St. Mary's was worthwhile. Whether the upgrade, was it an upgrade? So if you're interested in that video, if it's not on the channel, there'll be other, other videos to the side of me. If it is on the channel, it'll be right next to me there. I will see you in one of those videos. Thanks for watching.